Good afternoon and welcome to San Diego Mesa College Recital Hour. For those of you that are new, Recital Hour is a course at San Diego Mesa College in which we invite outside performers to come perform for us and students can attend as well as members of the community. And students that attend have to write some papers and do some analysis, but if you are a member of our community, welcome. You just get to sit back and enjoy. Today we have a very special performer. Her name is Debbie Wong and she is a jazz vibraphone player. And you'll see she is not a San Diego native. She's an international performer that we were able to book through the magic of virtual bookings to get to perform with us here today. Afterwards, I have an interview with her where we get a little bit more into her background. So I hope you enjoy our first performance. If you are curious about Recital Hour, please head to the San Diego Mesa College Recital Hour website and check out the lineup we have for the rest of the semester. Enjoy.
by David Friedman and Dave Samuel, a legend that I admired of. And uh, this is a classic called Caruso. There is a marimba vibes version as well as vibes and vibes duo. And uh, there is a part that supposed to be uh, improvisation and we decided to make an adjustment and to do like a real improvisation. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to play as it's written exactly. Um, well, most of the part, yes, we do, but um, the solo part, we will create our own version and I hope you will like it. So here is our version of Caruso. Mm -hmm.
and uh, this is actually this was actually my homework for my model <laughs> harmony class and it is actually part of my final project and the uh, prerequisite was to write a polymodal song so me and Jack are actually playing in different mode me myself and playing in G flat Lydian and Jack is playing in G flat Dorian and the this song it doesn't really make sense at all and it doesn't have really a lot of meaning but it does give some kind of a mysterious vibe and I hope you enjoyed my modo final homework which I actually gave the name as it written modo final <laughs>
I decided to put another short video of my trio since the video length is a little bit too short and this is an original of my called a drunken god da zui ba xian and the meaning of the title comes from a tradition of buddhism in taiwan um, it has the meaning of a god get themselves drunk and uh, bring peacefulness and healthiness to both I think it's very happy and but somehow it's very sweet and it fits the time right now since we are sort of str still struggling because of the COVID-19 and I hope you all enjoy it and this is a song for everyone who so suffer uh, under health condition and I really hope you will enjoy this and I put a um, short sample of our culture you could hear it and just hear the demonstration. Yeah, and that's it. So let's see the video of uh, A Drunken God. <laughs>
Hi, uh, we just played Giant Steps and uh, we decided to have something that is much more uh, ballad-ish. I mean, it is a ballad. <laughs> so much more uh, kind of uh, smoothy and uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is a ballad called Stella by Starlight by Victor Young. And uh, it sounded really good with marimba, so here it is. I hope you enjoy it.
San Diego Mental College. Thanks for Scott's invitation. You just listened to our version of Stella by Starlight. I know with my screen. Uh, we recorded for eight hours and we decided to hate that take since it is beautiful and it sounds authentic. Um, I hope you enjoy this kind of uh, funny moment, authentic moment um, in your recital hour and uh, very happy to be part of it and to work on those tunes on marimba and vibes especially we don't really have this opportunity to work together and um, i hope you enjoy the whole recital hour and my scream and this video as well so i'll see you probably in the future i hope well uh, i hope well. what, what does that even mean <laughs> i hope so i hope so okay all right bye, bye. Thank you so much for your performance. It was wonderful. And thank you for sharing that online presentation with us. Please introduce yourself to our viewers who are watching here today. Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Wong. I'm a vibra from Liz from Taiwan. And I used to be a classical percussionist. And then uh, I moved to, or more like I decided to change my path through jazz. So I started to study at Berkeley in 2018. And now I'm in Taiwan due to the COVID, but gladly we have this opportunity to share my performance online globally. So yeah, that's it, I think. <laughs> oh, very, very cool. Thank you. Uh, and um, so you gave us a little bit about your background. Uh, so tell, tell us why you chose this particular music to share with us. Um, I feel like I feel more um released and uh more natural when i play jazz well more like uh i am open to every kind of music and uh despite i grew up with grew up as a classical music background i still listen to different music like techno or uh uh funk or hip-hop or um uh jazz blues so it's like um i i feel like i didn't really particularly chose jazz it's more like it just naturally come to it and i feel comfortable to play with it even though it is very challenging and i feel like i'm still learning a lot and i'm still a student rather than a teacher in this kind of uh, uh learning field and, and um, but I definitely feel more, um, there's a, there, there are a lot of excitement when you play with different people and uh, those spontaneously uh, uh, makes me wonder if I can create something that is, that I might not think about it. You know, it's like you, you just create out of nowhere and you don't even know, sorry for the, uh, um, uh, I don't know how to explain that. It's just like there, there's a spark. Right. And so what I'm kind yeah. of getting is that um, for you, uh, playing in an ensemble makes a difference because it sounds like that you like the input from other people. And then also improvisation is something that you're you're fascinated by. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Somehow it's not only improvisation. It's more like a... Uh, uh, I mean, the improvisational part, yes, uh, but also there are a lot of things that is, um, there, there, there are a lot of, like, that atmosphere it yeah, creates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of, it, it's kind of hard to describe how I feel about this music, but I just feel close to it. And uh, I think that also had something to do with me myself as a as as an Asian and grew up in Austria actually because I I went to Austria when I was thirteen, and I sort of feel uh, I am the minority in Austria, and I feel like listening to African American music I feel more related, and uh, I I understand I somehow understand the the pain. It, it is, it's some, I don't know if this sounds really politically correct, but it's like uh, 
you you feel alone and then you understand this kind of feeling yeah yeah uh no totally so you know i'm actually going to jump down to a question i usually save for the end but the what you brought up i think it really ties into it one of our focal points this year is diversity in music and it's my belief that a diversity of culture genders politics and outlook all affect your artistry so how do you think diversity affects music has your background which you had just mentioned uh, play into your musical career? Did you have any challenges based off who you were? And if so, how did you address them? Um, so first of all, uh, Taiwan itself, it's a country that it doesn't have jazz naturally. It is not our music. It is not our culture. So it's more like I have to learn how to, how to swing by listening a lot and uh, and and I feel like learn how to swing that also uh, it has something to do with the culture itself. It's like yeah. you can't you can you can't just understand the eighth note and the 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 real book. Then you can know how to swing. It there is some sort of background that you have to educate yourself. And um, I feel like the the class that I took in at Berkeley African um, African American diaspora, um, it helped me a lot to understand the groove behind uh, African American music, and it it is really far from our country, far from our uh, culture, because you know in Taiwan our music, uh, like our uh, traditional music, it is based on uh, a lot of pentatonic, which yeah. is actually very interesting. And since uh, a lot of um, African music, too. Uh, African music are, yeah. are pentatonic too, but uh, how they play it, they play the pentatonic differently. Mm -hmm. And I, I see the connection and I also see the difficulties jumping from a Taiwanese uh, point of view to the American point of view, especially for me, myself, I grew up in Austria and that's, like uh, I need to learn something that is very Western classical, like straight A's and you need to follow the rule, you need to follow the chart, even though there is a lot of like self-interpretation, but it is so far away from the African-American music. And I feel like the pass from Austria, Taiwan and the States, I, I, I spent a lot of time to understand the difference between those cultures and those music. And uh, I don't know what, how, I, 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 I actually don't know how I sound. I don't know if I sound the Taiwanese or like, the, does it sound like a, an Austrian jazz or American jazz? It's, it's sort of a combination, you know, it's like people, when people talk about jazz, they will talk about uh, the, the European jazz is ECM and then American jazz is like uh, traditional bebop or swing. And I don't even know what I'm doing right now. It's just sort of a combination of this three countries. And yeah, I think it, it affects a lot, but I don't know how to describe it. Well, maybe it's... Uh... Taiwanese by way of Austria with American influence. I don't know, <laughs> but whatever it is, what's nice about that is having such diverse cultural view. I mean, finding out more about your background is fascinating to me right now. Uh, it surely informs the way you approach music, if nothing else. So um, uh, it's, it's always good to find artists who have like an individual approach even if mm -hmm. they're doing like jazz standards or if they're doing classical music, like you said, the voice that you have from your background is going to be so different than uh, many of our, you know, just being mm -hmm. American vocal points. Yeah. So um, what do you do for a living? Is music your full-time career? Now, I know during the pandemic, this answer ranges quite a bit because so many of us have experienced like you were a student and then you had to go back to uh, Taiwan. What, uh, so what do you do nowadays? Well, I teach, <laughs> this is kind of funny because I actually have three jobs simultaneously and uh, I, I, I teach music and I teach an online shedding class. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We will just meet 
every uh, Monday and Wednesday online and we will shed a tune in a month and we will just apply a lot of um, like technique, just a lot of applications and we will just practice together, sort of like open studio, but for Chinese speaking people. Mm -hmm. And so I teach that class and I actually teach another um, like African-American diaspora. So it's more like African-American music, history, culture and listening class. And uh, I, I teach languages as well. I teach English, German since I grew up in Austria. And uh, I actually am an editor as well. I, <laughs> I, I write for um, elementary school uh, bilingual music uh, book, I would say, yeah. So uh, I think that's, and I perform, yeah, totally forgot about that. I, I well, perform, that's yeah. another thing is, uh, so <laughs> Uh, I'm a classical guitar player, so I used to love reading for like music history stuff where, you know, so and so classical artists had a wealthy mm -hmm. patron or they became the um, Kapellmeister of this church and that was their job and I'm always telling students, that's not what it's like anymore so you what <laughs> yeah. you've said is exactly the path that most of us have taken, we have multiple jobs in order to make yeah. it so uh, that's par for the course. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not shameful of uh, if I'm not making a living by performing only since mm -hmm. uh one i'm in taiwan jazz is not a big industry it is growing but it is not a big industry in taiwan two i am a vibraphonist it's like i'm probably one of the four vibraphonists in taiwan there are not a lot of uh musicians uh vibraphonists here so it's like um it is definitely hard and also like teaching those uh, African-American music culture, th that doesn't exist before. And I decided to teach it because I know that in Taiwan, a lot of people love to dance. They, uh, they are, there are a lot of street dancers and uh, they love to listen to music and they actually are intriguing about the, the, the background behind it. So uh, I think, as long as I can spread my information and as long as I can play and I don't, I, I can uh, not, not say make a living. Let's say I'm not, I'm not struggling with money financially. So, mm -hmm. so far I'm good. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all of your uh, music that you shared with us today, as well as your insights about yourself. I, th I guess I should say Dankeschön, right? Since you speak German. Dankeschön, genau, genau, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, <laughs> hopefully we see you again in the future. And um, do you have any social media you would like to point our audience towards? I do have a Facebook page, but okay. it is called Debbie Wong, D-B-B-Y-W-A-N-G. And there are tons of Debbie Wong. <laughs> I think you have to find the vibraphonist Debbie Wong. And I think will, there's only will provide a link for the class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have an Instagram as well. So it, it will be better if I just give you the link and people will see it. Yeah. Perfect. Otherwise, there aren't too many Debbie Wongs online. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. Thank you again so much. Thank you.